We just thank you for that right now, Father God. Satan, I bind up every foul devil demon spirit, every hindering demonic devil demon spirit, every lying spirit, every spirit of Jezebel, destruction, control, manipulation, every foul devil demon spirit of sickness and disease. I bind you from this place and cast you into outer darkness where you will have no return. In the name of Jesus, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. No weapon formed against God's people will prosper in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you and we're going to give it our all to you this morning. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Father God, your word says, The Lord is my shepherd, we shall not want. He makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside white waters. He restores our soul. He guides us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though we walk through the valley of de death, we will fear no evil. For you are with us. You will run your staff. They comfort us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. You anoint our head with oil. Surely, goodness and love follow us all the days of our life. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, we thank you for your word. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Matthew chapter 5, I heard a preacher, one of my favorite preachers, who walks in a strong relationship with the Holy Spirit, who loves Jesus with all his being, 
and uh, they were interviewing him and he was saying about how the churches today, how they teach a lot of, on prosperity and don't get me wrong, we believe in prosperity. We believe that God wants us to be blessed, to be a blessing and you are blessed to be a blessing in your giving. That's clear in the scriptures. That's what God wants. But he said, and we focus on good fuel stuff, good fuel words, motivational words, and your pastor becomes, instead of a spiritual coach, he becomes a lifetime coach, and it shouldn't be like that. And he said, what happened to preaching the Beatitudes that Jesus preached? And uh, today we're going to touch on it, but we're not preaching the Beatitudes, I'm just using one of the Beatitudes as a scripture basis for the word of promise that I have for you today. Do you need to be saved? <laughs> it needs to be delivered, say my boy. You need to be delivered. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13, this is what Jesus said. You'll soon catch on to what the word is that the Lord has for you today. He said there, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It's then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And he goes on to say in verse 14, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. I don't know about you, but I like salt on my food. <coughs> uh, for the health fanatics, that's not good. <laughs> but I do like it, and I like pepper as well, especially if it's a roast. But I can tell you that if the salt has lost its flavour, it's a waste of time. It's not even like eating sugar, it's like eating nothing. And like Jesus said, you might as well throw it away because it's good for nothing. Salt adds taste to the food, it adds a sharpness to the food, it adds a flavour to the food. And we are, Jesus says, the salt of the world. And so we should be adding flavour to this world, to this earth, in our lifestyles as born-again believers. And in 14, verse 14, he said, You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all those who are in the earth. I can, this reminds me of two things. One, it reminds me of when I first came to South Africa, and I was going to, in those days, it was known as the Eastern Transvaal, and I was going down, and I was going a long way around, going up through the mountains, and I had a Toyota motor car, a Toyota 1900, I think it was, and, uh, and it broke down. Going up the steep incline, there wasn't a car to be seen anywhere. And I had a look, I had a radiator leak and all the water had leaked out. And I remember looking across the valley and on the hill was this house and there was a light shining. This always reminds me of that room. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. How many of you can realize this morning that Jesus is talking about you and me? He's talking about us, that we should be the salt of the earth, that we shouldn't lose our flavor, that we must maintain our flavor and be good seasoning in this earth, that we are lights. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Our light should shine before men as well in Jesus' name. Let's just turn over the page to 2 Corinthians. 
as we continue along with this vein and you understand a bit more just now. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. You need a diffuser for the fragrance or the aroma to spread, to, to, to be smelt throughout the house. Verse 15, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other the aroma of life leading to life, and who is sufficient for these things. For we are not, as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, and I like to think that this church is like that, we're not peddling the word of God, but we are sincere in our belief, sincere in our ministry, sincere in the message we preach, sincere in our praise and worship, sincere of our godly love towards those who walk through the doors of this church. We are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God we speak in the sight of God in Christ. So what we say, what we do, how we behave when we come together in worship and sitting under the word of God, God, we do it all in the sight of God. And one thing that I'm very aware of is, I think it's in Peter where it says there that I will fall into a stricter judgment because I'm the teacher, I'm the pastor, I'm the preacher in Jesus name. So what is the Apostle Paul saying here? He's just substantiating what Jesus said in the Beatitudes, that we need to be the salt of the earth, that we need to be a light that's not hidden, but a light that's shining before men in this earth. And he says here, Paul says, because we are the fragrance of Jesus Christ. We are the fragrance amongst those that are being saved, because they see Jesus in us, or they should see Jesus in us, they should hear Jesus in us, and they should want this Jesus that we preach. But they will only want if the Holy Spirit convicts them. You see, some people are hard-headed, and they're too full of pride that the Holy Spirit can't convict them. They don't think they need a Savior. They think they can manage. I've done all right. I've done quite well on my own. I've been quite a success in earth, on this earth. I've been quite a success in life. Well, my dear friend, your life is going to come to an end, as is all of us. It's a fact of life. It will come to an end. And then where will you go? Will you be saved or will you, be, be, or will you perish? And to those that perish, we are the aroma of death leading to death. But to those that are being saved, we are the aroma of life that's leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? None of us. We all need Jesus. We can't save ourselves. We can only be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Some people don't believe in having Christmas trees. We were talking about it yesterday, weren't we? Some people don't believe in, I think Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate Christmas. And um, there's always been this controversy in the Christian church to some people that are, have not really let go of the law because Jesus has fulfilled the law and don't really realize that now we're living under this dispensation of grace. And uh, they think it's a pagan thing. And in really speaking, it was a pagan thing. It was started by a pagan church in Rome. But the, like I said to you on Christmas Day, I always regard it as a good opportunity to be able to sh share Jesus with other people. And it's a good thing to be able to share Jesus with other people as well. Jesus is worth sharing with other people. 
Nobody can save you except Jesus. Hallelujah. And we need to spend time in his presence. Mm, yeah, that's right. For us to be in the fragrance, mm. the aroma of Christ. Christ the Savior. We have to spend time in his presence. Yeah. We have to spend time talking to him. Mm. We have to spend time meditating on him, that's thinking right. about him, Amen. loving him. That's right. Building our relationship with Him. If we don't spend time in His presence, talking to Him, listening to Him, we have no relationship. And if we have no relationship, all of what I'm saying to you today will be like a clanging cymbal. Because there will be no love there. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells us we must have love. Otherwise it's a clanging cymbal. You see... We are the Jesus in this world. We're his hands, we're his feet, we're his voice. I think it's in the first epistle of John. And it says there in chapter 5 or somewhere like that. that as Christ is, so are we in this world. We're the only Jesus that some people will ever know. I remember one day, some of you have heard this story before. And I, I went to give an old lady a quote in Croydon. And uh, her garden was in a mess and I opened the gate and I'm walking down and, and I'm feeling a little bit fed up because I could see it was a big job and I could see by the house that maybe she wouldn't be able to afford to have a clean up. And as I, pro I approached the door, she came, I opened the door and she said to me, you're a born again Christian, aren't you? <laughs> and uh, she said, I can see it all over you. And that's how we need to be all the time. The devil wants to try and break us down. He wants to try and get the old man to rise up. He wants us to lose our temper. He wants us to say things that we shouldn't say. He wants us to have attitudes that we shouldn't have. But God wants us to love all men and to love God in particular. You see, when we become born again, let me just read the scripture to you. Let's just turn, turn in our Bibles to John chapter 7 and verse 37. And it says there, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, some translations say, out of his belly. But what it means is out of his deep innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Will flow rivers of living water. Now this rivers of living water, we're going to go to John chapter 4 just now, but this rivers of living water it pertains to the Holy Spirit. Of course it does. But we should be believers, children of God, family of God, that when we're out there in the world, the, we are producing rivers of living water that's flowing out of us all the time. In that way, we are the fragrance of Jesus. We are the aroma of Jesus. We are the salt of the earth. We are a light that's not hidden on a hill, but a light that's shining brightly for Jesus. And if you look, just turn back a couple of pages to John chapter 4 and verse 14. John chapter 4 and verse 14 is... Well, let me just read to you. You see, this is a good example. You must understand that Jesus, he, he walked this earth as a man. Not as God. Philippians chapter 2 says, He stripped himself of all divinity, of all divine power, of all, of all divine advantage. When they, he spoke about going to his death, and the disciples tried to prevent him from doing it when, when they wanted to attack, when the soldiers and everybody wanted to attack Jesus. Jesus turned to them and said, don't you think I can call down legions of angels at any time I want? But I'm doing this so that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And he stripped himself of all divine power and as a man he went to the cross. 
As a man, he gave up his spirit. As a man, he suffered and endured the beatings and the torture so that we could live, so that we could be healed, so that we could be saved. He became poor so that we could become rich. But here is a perfect illustration of, a, of the saltiness. In John chapter 4 it says, Therefore when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself did not baptize, but his disciples did, he left Judea and departed again to Galilee. But he needed to go through Samaria. So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well, and it was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. This is quite profound, because a woman from Samaria should not be talking to a Jewish believer, a Jewish person. Jewish man or woman. The Jews treated the Sumerians like dogs. And here she comes to draw water from the well. Jesus looks up and sees her. And he says to her, give me a drink. Verse 8, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Verse 9, then the woman of Samaria said to Jesus, how is it that you being a Jew ask a drink from me a Samaritan woman. For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Believe you me, she was being polite. For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And the woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as well as his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water, he's talking about the water that he can give, or he's talking about the water in the well, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water, a fountain of living water, springing up into everlasting life. That's why you need this fountain, fountain of living water springing up into everlasting life. The devil tries to switch the tap, close the tap. To stop that fountain water from flowing through you, welling up and springing forth. Feeding or, 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 or giving others the opportunity to drink of this living water of God through you as a child of the living God. When you go into the shop next and you're at the till and there's somebody there who may be suffering or somebody there who may be in a state and you don't know anything about them, you may not even know that they're in a state. But they will feel the freshness of that living water that flows through you and they could easily turn and speak to you and ask you about it. Did you give your testimony about that lady at the doctor's pet? You already did. And there was a perfect example. Verse 15, the woman said to Jesus, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. And Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You've answered well. I have no husband. For you've had five husbands, and the one whom you now have is not your husband. In that you've spoken the truth. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. But Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. 
We know the source of the living water. doesn't say that, but that's what he means. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshippers, and the true worshippers are those of the house of Israel. I must do that teaching for you one day. When the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. You see, we need to be a source. We need to be a source of the river of life that comes from God. There used to be a song that we used to sing. There's a river of life. There's a river of life flowing out from me. Opens deaf ears and helps a blind to see. I can't remember the words, but anyway. When we were first born again, we used to sing this song. And it's true. We have a river of life. And it should be flowing out of us. It should be quenching all the thirsty that come into contact with us. And people should see we are the difference. We are the fragrance. We are the salt. And we are the light. As we go into next year. As we go into the year 2021. I forgot to use my... Have you been doing that for me? And as we've been going to the year 2021... We need to go into the year 2021 in faith. Believing. Believing that what is impossible with man is possible with God. We need to go into 2021 believing that with God all things are possible. Mm -hmm. We need to go into 2021 holding the hand of the Prince of Peace. We need to go into 2021 Holding the hand of Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We need to go into 2021 in a positive frame of mind with the river of life flowing out from us in Jesus' name. Let me give you a challenge today. What you need to do January the 1st when you wake up. When you get out of bed, the first thing you need to do is just take a few minutes with the Lord just sit on the side of your bed and just start to thank Him thank Him for 10 things that you can think of thank Him for the air that you breathe thank Him for good health thank Him for provision thank Him for being your Lord and Saviour and for loving you so much that your life is changing to a better way of life. Just keep on fighting. You will find those things. You may feel down. You may feel beaten. You may feel that you, 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 you can't get through the challenges that you're facing. You might feel that uh, nothing but doom and gloom. But let me tell you, that's a time to start thanking God, lifting your hands and thanking Him. Because when you start to thank Him, your spirit will rise up, you will be lifted up, and you will be talking faith over yourself. You'll be talking health over yourself, provision over yourself, and peace over yourself as well. You need to do that. Because you are a child of the living God. And your Father God is a God who calls those things that be not, just as though they are, until those things that be not come into being as they are. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to be speaking life over yourself. The devil wants to put pain in your body. The devil wants to put gloom in your mind. The devil wants to put holes in your pockets. <laughs> but what you can do as you can fight the devil. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 that the word of God is the sword of the Spirit. And it's with the sword of the Spirit that we defeat the enemy. That we defeat the devil. 
Because the Bible says that we overcome all things and that in Christ Jesus we are more than conquerors. I'm trying to build you up this morning because I want you to go into next year. On, is it Friday? Friday is New Year's Eve or New Year's Day? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anyway, I think Saturday's New Year's Day. What is Christine? Thursday. It's a Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Thursday is New Year's Day. Friday is New Year's Day. Okay. So Friday, you need to be preparing yourselves already and getting your faith built up, knowing that on Friday, my life is changing for the better because I'm going into a new year, a new day of a new month, of a new year, with new beginnings. Mm, hallelujah. Isn't that, doesn't that sound good? It's like a big garlic steak in front of you. Yeah, let's go home. <laughs> it's like a big garlic steak in front of you, and you're ready to get stuck into it. You know, many years ago, there used to be a restaurant in Camden Park called, uh, what was it called? The Steakhouse. The Steakhouse. You weren't even thought of in those <laughs> days, my girl. Never mind, sorry. The Steakhouse, I used to love their garlic steak. Best garlic steak I've ever tasted. And before I had the garlic steak, I had the garlic snails as well. <laughs> Lovely, man. But Friday is a new beginning. Friday's coming! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's nothing you can do about the past. There's nothing you can do about the year 2020. It's been. It's gone. There's nothing you can do about it. Whatever happened, happened. All you can do is reach out to the future. And not allow the past to weigh you down and to hold you back and to slow up your life. You've got to let go of what's happened and reach out to the future with Jesus. That's what God teaches in his word. That's what he encourages us to do all the time. To let go of the past and to reach out to the future in Jesus' mighty and awesome name. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, that you got us through 2020. We made it. Hallelujah. And there's a reason why we made it. We made it because you've got a plan and purpose for us for 2021. And it's us that you want to use. That's why you've chosen us. That's why you brought us through. That's why we're all gathered here today in this church. Building our faith through your word. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I just pray that the year 2021 will be a year of good health and provision, of peace in our hearts. But more than that, Lord, it will be a year when you will use us as instruments in the salvation of other people as well. Lord, that other people would not perish, but they would come to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, because they see us as the salt of the world, and they can smell the fragrance of an eternal Jesus Christ in our lives. And we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Going to have communion, yes. Going to have communion. But there's something I want to do. The Lord's been laying on my heart that we should do it more often. And while the camera's on us, in Jesus' name. For you to experience these benefits of Jesus, you need Jesus in your heart. You need Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. Every person here this morning is born again. But maybe you're watching this video and you're not born again. Maybe you live in Brazil or Argentina, somewhere like that. And you've never heard about this Savior called Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God who came into this world and paid the price of sin, which is death, so that we could be free, and that we could be born again, and we could go into an eternal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to put your hand out towards whatever you're watching this video on, and I want you to just say this prayer this morning with me. Father God, I am a sinner. 
but I know, I know. you've forgiven me. Forgiven you. That's why Jesus came That's why Jesus to, pay the price to pay the price for my sin. For my sin. Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart. Into my heart. Take, over my life. Take over my life. I submit to you. Submit to you. And I thank you, I thank you. That, I'm now that I'm now a child of God. Child of God. Holy Spirit, just fill them with yourself. Yeah. Fill them with your power yeah. and your might. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. you can dish out the stuff that we're singing this song. Amen. Praise God. For you alone deserve all glory. Thank you, Jesus. That guides my heart, my help in time of need. You are the hope that leads me on and brings me to my knees. For there I find.
thank you, Lord, for the beating that you took. We thank you, Lord, for the way the, you just received all that belittlement when they spat on you, when they punched you in the face, Lord, when they put that crown of thorns and they pushed it onto your head so that those thorns penetrated your scalp and the blood flowed down over your face, Lord, and you did it so that we could be free so that we could be healed. You are the true Lord. You are the true God, living God. And we love you, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we are healed. We're reminded of this, that we are healed in Jesus' name. Let's just take and eat together. Healed in the name of Jesus. Healed in the name of Jesus. Healed in the name of Jesus. And then you took the cup, the cup of the covenant of grace. And as we drink this, we can say we're saved in the name of Jesus. We apply this blood to our minds. We apply this blood to our families. Your word says, Lord... Something we can't grasp, but it's because of your love for us. But your word says that our unsaved loved ones are sanctified because of our belief. Our unsaved loved ones are sanctified, that means set apart, sanctified for salvation because of our salvation. That's awesome, Lord. That's awesome, Lord. The Word says that even though, yet when we were still sinners, you died for us. You shed your blood for us. You didn't wait for us to be perfect. You didn't wait for us to become believers. You just went to the cross and died for us while we were still sinners. And we can now take this cup because you've made the way. You've opened the door for us, Lord. And we can drink. And we can thank you, Lord. We can thank you that we are saved. In Jesus' name, let's drink together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, what an awesome God. What a mighty God.
So we're going to really trust God for an amazing year ahead. Amen. Sickness and disease has to bow. Go. It's got to go. It Jesus has to name. bow its knee to the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Cancers have to die. Amen. Dementia has to die. Amen. Um, colon disease has to die. Every foul devil demon spirit has to die in the name of Jesus. It will not attach itself to any of us in this body, right. any of our family, friends and relatives in the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ of Amen. Nazareth. Amen. Those sicknesses have to bow. Yes. They have to dissipate in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And by the blood of Jesus, no weapon formed against us or our families will prosper in the name Amen. of Jesus, Jesus Christ Amen. of Nazareth. Amen. Father, we bring every precious yes. person in this book before you, Father God, Father, we just thank you that 2021 is going to be such a, an yes, amazing Lord. year full mm. of your benefits, Father. Healing, deliverance, divine alignment, divine, adventure, uh, divine intervention, supernatural yes, wealth transfer, supernatural debt cancellations. We thank you for miracles, signs and thank wonders, you, Father. We thank you for full-time ministry in a full Amen. church, Father. Yes, Father, you, we're going to see, we're going to see uh, 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 miracles in this place, Father Amen. God. We're going to see it. We're going to see it. Creator of miracles. We Amen. are going to experience it in our lives Amen. in the name thank of you, Jesus, Lord. Father. We are ready. We are ready for 2021. Thank no you, matter Lord. what Sons the enemy is trying, Amen. he's fought against us. He is thank defeated you, by the blood of Amen. Jesus. Amen. So, Father, we just thank you for financial breakthroughs, yes. healings, restoration, provision, peace, prosperity, good health, Father God, protection, Father. We just thank you for that right now. We just thank you, Lord, and in the name of Jesus, we destroy and cancel yes, out amen, every assignment amen. of the enemy against us in Jesus', Jesus name. name. In Jesus' amen, name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We are tithers and yes, we are givers, amen. Father. We thank you, Lord. Amen. It's good measure. Press down, shaking together, thank running over, shall men pull back into our bosoms. Father, thank you, Lord. I forgot to mention, Father God. We thank you for our debt-free home, Father, yes, and our debt-free car, white, yes, four by four, in Jesus' mighty amen, name. Amen. Hallelujah. And Father, for Praise those who are believing for things in their life, Father, we thank you, Father, it will come speedily, in amen. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We thank you for your favor on us as a body. We thank you for that right now. Amen. Thank you, Father, in Jesus', Jesus mighty name. name. We pray for long life over our families, yes. thank our you, Lord. friends, our relatives, our lives, Father, in thank Jesus, you, our children, grandchildren, brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews, in Jesus' name. Praise God. We thank you for long life. Praise God. And Father, we always say that we pray that we are all going up in the rapture Amen. together. Not one will be left behind. Not one will go before his appointed time amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, praise amen, God. amen. Praise God. Does anybody need prayer for anything? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. So, Lord, until the next time when we gather together, we thank you, Father, that we have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us, Lord. We have the power of your might inside of us, Lord. The same Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us, and he will quicken our mortal bodies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly. exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us through Christ Jesus, to him be glory. 
forever and ever. And we all say it. Amen. Amen and amen. The Lord bless and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen.